Welcome to lecture 12, The Philosophy of Science. The, the philosophy of science defines the assumptions, the methods, and the limits of science. Science is the very foundation of critical thinking. It is the method of testing our beliefs. Science is, has strengths, it is, it is transparent, that there are no secrets. Things are published, information gets out. Science is rigorous. It has rules and it follows those rules religiously. It's a system of methods that seek to compensate for the failings in the human thinking, the failings in our human perception and our memory. When we look at the, science, the philosophy of science, we're looking at two things. Methodological naturalism, which says that material facts material effects must have material causes. At no time can you evoke the clause and then a miracle occurs. And then philosophical naturalism says that there is only one natural world and that there is an objective reality. That the world is knowable and also the world is predictable. Science uses the scientific method and there's slightly different versions of the scientific method, but they all have to deal with coming up with a hypothesis, testing that hypothesis, gathering evidence both pro and con to your hypothesis, and then all of your ideas have to be able to be proven false. If, you, if there's no possibility of proving it false, then it's not science. Science is actually a human endeavor it's not an abstract activity. And as a human endeavor, it's, it's things that people actually do, which means it's subject to all of the flaws of human, uh, of being a human. Fortunately, science is self-correcting. And this is probably science's, science's strongest feature, that ideas are tested and retested. And only the, those ideas that attempt, that survive, repeated attempts to prove them wrong, actually survive. In reality, most studies, most experiments, don't prove what the hypothesis supposed, or prove the hypothesis uh, incorrect. It's, it has to be repeatedly tested and tested and tested and tested over and over again, with other people trying to disprove that hypothesis before we can say, yes, this is true. We look at, uh, at science, just looking at life, we look at different paradigms. A paradigm is a way of thinking. That's why we look at the term paradigm, simply a way of thinking. If we look at the history of science, there was, there's normal science, then there's some scientific crisis occurs that normal science cannot explain until it has a paradigm shift or is able to think in different ways. When problems cannot be solved with current beliefs, with the current scientific, uh, current beliefs, the current scientific understanding that we have, that's when we discover a crisis. And it takes entirely new paradigms to rethink about this. And explanations are simply not enough. That what we believe has to not only be able to explain but it also needs to be able to make predictions. A good example of this is the theory of relativity versus classic science, the Newtonian science, the basic physics. <coughs> Newtonian science is fine and dandy as far as it goes. It is correct, but it's not as correct as relativity. And it required an entirely new shift in our thinking to actually think uh, about the world in a different way. So we had a paradigm shift. We also look at science, as in regular life, we look at Occam's razor. Occam's razor pretty much says the simplest is the best. The simplest explanation is the best. So if we have two different explanations for the same uh, situation, we look at how complicated are those explanations. And the simplest explanation is typically the best. A good example of this 
is the, our rotation of the planets around our sun. We had, for a long time, the uh, Ptolemaic system. The Ptolemaic system said the Earth was the center of the universe, and all of the planets, including the sun, revolved around the Earth. And it was very, very complicated. Uh, it had to account for the retrograde in planets. It had to account for all the constellations and how they moved. It was incredibly complicated. But then along comes Galileo and says, you know what, no, the Earth isn't the center of the, the universe. The sun is actually the center of our solar system, and all the planets revolve around the sun. And that was a much better explanation, and a whole lot more simple, it, simpler. It allowed for more explanation and more and better predictions. But it still wasn't all that good. Then along comes Newton and adapts Galileo's explanation, and now a whole lot more is explained. But there's still flaws in it. And so then along comes Einstein with the theory of relativity, and even more is explained, and even more is able with accurate predictions. So Occam's razor is cutting to what is the simplest is usually the best. And everything in science is provisional. All of our, our beliefs are subject to change. As new information comes about, it is expected that our belief systems change, that our theories adapt and grow according to new information, according to new data, according to new ways of thinking and interpreting information, that it's not just set in stone, and this is the way it is, but things grow and change. That's one of the strong, uh, one of the strengths of science is that we're constantly growing and changing. When we replace one theory with another one, it doesn't mean the old one is bad. It simply means the new one is better. For example, the ancient Greeks knew that the Earth was a sphere. They knew it through their mathematical calculations, through their observations, they knew that the Earth was a sphere. Later on, when explorers started sailing the, the oceans, they were able to make more accurate measurements. And we knew that the Earth wasn't just a sphere, but it's a round ball, but it's wider in the middle. So it's still a sphere, but it's a slightly different shape. And now with our, our great measurements we can make with satellites, we've made even more accurate measurements. So the Greeks were incorrect. The Greeks weren't, just, weren't as right as we are today. So science is ever-growing and ever-changing.